Hello and welcome to Lesson 5, Part 2 on Programming in Python. This is part of the IGCSE Computer Science series of videos. And if you just watched the Part 1 Lesson 5 video on file handling and how to use pen, write and read, hopefully at this stage you will be able to understand the benefits of using file handling and how to take data from an external file and put data into an external file. Now, we're moving on with the next part of this session, and you'll be able to get a link to this video by selecting on this link here. And this next part of the lesson is particularly complicated because we're not just reading and writing and appending data to a file now, we're also using lots of functions which are built into Python. We're looking at how you can split, or how you can split data which is in a table form and then put it into a one-dimensional array and how we can also copy data from one file to another. So first, most important thing. So each column, or for example, a piece of separated data from the data file txt file, you can see here is gonna be placed into a one dimensional array. Now, what do I exactly mean by that? And as always, if you're not one of my students and you want access to these lesson slides, obviously do drop me uh, a line. This link or the link to my REPL file is underneath this video. So, first file we're going to have a look at is data file txt. So, let's check it out. So, we've got Bob Jensen 24 Engineer London. So, this is a record of information. This is information about one person. We've got a total of three lines, so there are three different people. So, we've got Bob Jensen, he's 24, he's an engineer, he lives in London. And what we want to do is we want to take that information and we want to put this into different arrays so i would imagine probably something like first name last name age job city that bob lives in right so inside this python program when you open it up you're going to find that we have data file txt which is the first file we're going to be working with today which is this one here and then we have declared five different arrays so they're all one dimensional and we want to take the first name of each person and we want to put that into first name so we want to put each piece of data into a separate list for each of the people now in order for us to do this we're going to use a loop so we're going to say for line in file file is referring to the file which we opened up here as I mentioned in a previous video, if you want to change this to a more meaningful identifier, like the name of the file or another identifier that makes sense to you, that's fine. Now, for line in file, this is basically going to allow us to look at every single line until we get to line three, because there's three, pieces, uh, three lines of uh, uh, information there or three records. So we're going to do split line is equal to line dot split we want to separate out first name last name age job city that they live in and in order to do that what we're going to have to do is we're going to need to use the index position of each of the pieces of data so zero is going to take first name which is going to be in this case it's going to be bob and it's going to put bob into the list f name we're going to go to one and that's going to take Bob's last name which is Jensen and that's going to put it into L name and that's going to then strip it. We'll have a look a bit, little bit more about the strip function in a minute and it's going to do the same thing with ages, jobs and city and it's going to repeat this three times because there are three lines of data here. Now, as I said we'll have a look at that strip function so what exactly does this strip function do? So dot split it allows us to section the data into columns then append this into each data structure. So we've got five data structures, which are all called first name or F name, L name, ages, jobs, and city. So dot strip is allowing us to take the piece of information and put it into a column form inside a data structure. And after the split line, our uh, split lines, it indicates the index number of each of the columns. So we've seen that. So dot strip allows for any spacing to be removed before each word. So I should say word and also uh, not work here. And then using select and plus, 
the print statement is going to allow us to print out individual records of data. So let's head back into this Python file. So number one, file open. We've got our empty list. We're going to use a loop to look at every single line in this file. We're going to use split line. And this is going to allow us to take each of the pieces of data in the records and put them into each of these data structures here until it gets to the end of that file. And then what we're going to do is we're going to print out a complete record for each of these one dimensional lists. So let's check it out. So let me move this toolbar and press on run. So we've got Bob, Jet, Lisa, Jensen, Williamson, Harold. So these are all split into different sections now of first name, last name, ages, etc. So the next thing which it's asking us to do here is saying, what data do you want to output? Now, it's not a very meaningful prompt here because you don't really know what's in this file. So you can probably fix this when you're working on your notes, okay? Or if you're learning how to use uh, files inside Python. So I'm gonna say that I want to output record number two. Let's see what it gives us. So we're going to get Lisa, Harold, 48, Secretary, and Prague. Hmm. Let's see if that's a complete record of information. And we'll be able to see this has allowed us to output the third record here. Remember, list start at zero. Okay, so we've taken data from our external file. We've successfully put each of the pieces of data into a one dimensional array and then output that in Python form. Now, if you remember from last lesson, remember when you finish working with the file, always close it. Now, if you don't close it and you leave it open, you may accidentally overwrite information which is in there and delete information, or it may end up becoming corrupted. Now, I'm hoping that this first section is clear. Now, for the next section of this video, what we want to do is we want to have a look at these lines of code here. So what we're doing here is we are opening up a CSV file from line 32 to 34. And what we are doing is we are looking at the difference between read line and read lines. So if we head over to the json.csv file, and if we have a look at this here, we will be able to see that one complete line ends with Jason. And on line number two, we've got Terry, Terry, Terry. Not really meaningful information, but that's fine. So the difference between read line and read lines is that this is going to read a single line from that JSON CSV file and we'll be able to see here it's only output this record of information if we change this to read lines it's going to output everything from that file so just let's see what happens when we run again and here we'll be able to see it's taken Terry 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 as well now what we also want to be able to do is that we want to be able to remove those square brackets so when we're working with csv files you'll be able to see some unfortunately put square brackets around our data here so we're going to have a look at how we can remove those square brackets but before we do that let's move on to the second file so we've got bob txt read mode as f so we're just using file so this could change to any other name and we've got for line in F, print line end is equal to single speech marks. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to take that Bob TXT file and it's going to read absolutely everything until the end of the last line. And if we have a look over here from when it's been output here, let's run this again. So press on number one and one here, okay. And what we'll be able to see that it is output absolutely everything until the end here. Okay, so this is the difference between using read lines and also using print line and end is equal to single speech marks. Okay, so alternative ways to output all of the data or just maybe one line at a time using the read line function. Now, what we really need to focus on here is this. What happens if we're given a file of data which is in CSV form? What happens if we need to change it from CSV over to TXT? We want to change the file format using Python. 
Now, in order for us to do that, we're going to take big data CSV. Okay, we're going to open this up in read mode. In case you're wondering what we are at, WF or F here, these are just identifiers. You can change these to any meaningful identifier that you want to use. Now, we're going to open up this file in read mode. We're then going to open up new file txt in write mode. We're going to use a for loop, so for line in RF, and then we're going to do WF write and line. Now, just to prove that this works here, new file txt1 is not a file that exists on the left hand side. Inside big data CSV, we've got all of this information which talks about big data. If I go over here now, and if we now run this file, you'll be able to see a new file 1txt appear in a moment. And here it is, it's just a pitch, and it's taken all of that information from the CSV file over to our txt file. And this is how we change file or the file format from one to another. Now, the last concept in this video and the last concept in lesson number five for file handling is what happens if we have created a Python script and we've got lots of names which in, let's say, are a one or a two dimensional array, just like the one which you can see up here. How can we put this information into an external file and how can we put that information onto a new line each time. So going over to this Python file, what we have here is we have our one dimensional list. We have got a variable as num is equal to zero. And then over here in this section of the code, we are opening up a new file. Notice that my file already exists. Remember, using write mode, if a file doesn't exist, it's going to create one. And then we're doing for i in names. So this loop is going to allow us to look at every single index position inside this list. And then once we've done that, we're going to do wf write. Remember, this is the file which we have opened, right? This is the identifier for the file. And we're going to write the list and num. That's going to take the first piece of data. We're then going to increment num plus one once we've written the piece of data to a new line. And then it's going to keep looping this until there are no more pieces of data inside this one dimensional list. And as I said, just to prove that this works to you, I'm going to change this to new file free txt. We're going to run the code. We're going to output something over here. And you'll be able to see we've taken this list inside our Python program, which is here. And we've output every single name onto a new line. Now, the last thing that I have to look at with you today is what does good file handling look like? So this is a particularly important concept at IGCSE. And I want you to be able to output information in an organized form. Now, one of your tasks from today's video is gonna be applying these skills, right? And I'm gonna ask you to set up uh, a data file that has maybe 10 records of information. You're gonna split all of that information up into, let's say, different lists for name, surname, age, gender, and so on. And then you're going to need to output this in an organized format, similar to the output that you can see on the right hand side over here. So if we want to output record number one, what it should show is the name, surname of each person along with the field name in a nice organized format. So this is going to be your task for the end of lesson five, part two programming so you can apply these skills from the file handling lesson.